This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is a video review of Windows Phone 7, the new operating system. It's not particularly about this device, so this is the HTC HD7 that's going to be out on T-Mobile in the U.S. on November 8th. We'll have a separate review that just covers the device itself. But this big 4.3-inch screen lends itself to doing a demonstration of the new Windows 7 phone features. As you can see here, and you've probably seen this on some other sites, it's all about tiles. There's no Chrome anywhere. It's text and it's live tiles and some static tiles too. Fortunately, most tiles at this point are static. That means they don't really update and tell you anything. Like the Netflix doesn't change. T-Mobile TV doesn't change, but some of them do. For example, Hotmail will tell you if you have new mail. And likewise, this can do Exchange Email, obviously, since it's a Microsoft product. does it well. does POP3 and IMAP email as well as Gmail. So you can have tiles that will let you know about your email. Just a number of messages, though. No preview, no other information. The phone here brings you to the phone dialer. It tells me that I have a voicemail message. It would also tell me if I had missed calls. Hit the button once to wake it up. It tells you what your next appointment is, the time, and the fact that you have a missed call or voicemail right there on the screen. And just lift that up. This is a capacitive multi-touch display, by the way, so there's plenty of pinch zooming going on here. You've got your messaging. Again, you would have a message counter if you received a text message, it would tell you. And that's what it looks like the interface for the messaging. Tap on something here, it's cute threaded messaging and you can type a reply. If you notice down here there's a little dot 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 and then options for an attachment and so on. If you tap on the dot 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 it gives you options that are relevant. Something like a menu button kind of feature in Android. However, so far we're seeing the applications aren't really doing a whole lot with the, op the options that are available down there, we hope that that changes. You can add as more tiles if you want to the bottom. If you want to get rid of a tile, you just simply press and hold on it. And you'll see the push pin with the X through it appear, and you can just tap that to make it go away. You can also just tap and drag these guys around, hold it, and then drag it and put it up somewhere else if you wanted to. So here's your full application listing over here. I've downloaded a lot from the marketplace. Um, there are already quite a few applications. And when we first looked at Windows Phone 7 after they announced it a couple of weeks ago, it was like nothing there. And now all the top titles are making their appearance. We've got Flickster. We've got Weather. If you want to add any of these to the to the front page, you can just tap and hold on it, like so. And then you see Pin to Start Menu, Uninstall, or you can rate and review the application. So that's the application listing, and we're going to take a look at the, the app marketplace for Windows Phone soon. One thing down here, Microsoft mandates the hardware to an extreme in terms of the specifications of the buttons even. So you've got the back button, the Windows Start Menu button, a Find button, and the required camera key on the side. Now hardware-wise, this is almost identical to the HTC HD2 that we reviewed, well, about a year ago, that was a Windows Mobile 6.5 phone. Same screen, pretty much same hardware, same CPU, but it did not have a physical camera button, so therefore it couldn't be upgraded to Windows Phone 7. So this has a 1 gigahertz CPU in it, and all the Windows phones do. So in terms of speed performance here, because they are so standardized, they all work similarly in terms of performance. So we're going to go back to look at the tiles for a minute here. This is your people tile. Something's function is what Microsoft calls hubs. That is, there's a bunch of linked features inside. Since this phone's made by HTC, we also have an HTC hub down here, which isn't terribly active. We're going to check it out. HTC made a bunch of apps that are available on the Windows Marketplace for free, too. And for those of you who missed a big flip clock, there it is. Now, strangely, any applications that you installed that HTC did make don't show up here. This really is a link mostly to Marketplace apps to get more stuff. And it, it's kind of here for those of you who really just, gee, I wish I had that big old flip clock from the HD2 kind of thing. So that's what you see here. And again, this is, this is an awful lot like what you see from the regular market. The People Hub is quite cool. Other than the funny little animations you get on the home screen tile, here we're in the Facebook section of people, and it's really a beautiful rendering. It was visually very nice, and you can tap on things to click through and go to a web page if somebody provides a link. And this is written by Microsoft. They wanted to have Twitter support as well, but they didn't have time. And here is everybody in my address book. 
You can sync this with Google, you can sync this with Exchange, and you can sync this with Outlook on the desktop, as well as, obviously, your Windows Live account stuff. So everything is side, back, and forth scrolling here in the panoramic kind of rolling view. And you've got recent stuff here, and then back to contacts again. So in terms of your contacts, let's take a look at what you can do. Here's one that I actually just made up. I've got a phone number in here, so we can call mobile, send a text page to mobile, and you can tap here to map the work address using Bing. Now, Bing might not be our favorite web search, but their POIs and their mapping is top-notch, so there we have it. And right now we are using Wi-Fi. This is 3G on T-Mobile's network. We happen to be using Wi-Fi. That's a very nice level of detail there. That certainly rivals Google Maps. I think it's probably a little bit sharper and better. It does not rotate to landscape mode. Uh -huh. What happens if you have a reminder? This is what you see on screen. It does a little vibrate, makes a little sound, and you can snooze or dismiss. Speaking of the calendar, there's a tile for that too, and it shows you your next upcoming appointment. It only shows you one appointment. Sadly, the, the great home screen that we really actually enjoyed from old Windows mobile versions that showed you several appointments and other important things is kind of gone here, despite Microsoft's attempts to convince us that this is actually a simpler UI that reduces the number of presses. When you look at the screen here, you're really not seeing that much detail about your upcoming appointments, your email, or anything else. So there's that. If you tap that, you come into Calendar, and here is your Calendar view, which is quite pretty. And you can tap that to see a month view with tiny Greek text for every entry you have. You can have multiple calendars here in different colors. You can have a Windows Live calendar, you can have a Gmail calendar, you exchange calendar, all on the same device. That we do like. The Photo Log tile takes up two spaces, as you can see right here, and this will just cycle through. You can set this to be active insofar as it can do a slideshow of the photos that you have on. You can take a look at the Microsoft Photo Viewer that's here. You can see that's very fast. And you can do either a full page or the strip view by pinch zooming. If you want to get more apps on this, because of course every phone is about apps these days, there's the marketplace right here. And you can see HTC apps, particularly since it's an HTC phone, look at all apps, games, or music. And then you can slide there to see what's been featured so far. Look for local concerts, and then wrap back around again. So we're going to take a look at the games that are available now. This does have Xbox Live integration, and you can set up your own avatar and keep track of your high scores and all that kind of thing. So we've got Bejeweled Live, Carnivale, The Blob, Earthworm Jim, Flight Control, Frogger, Glow Artisan, Hexic Rush, Monopoly, Rocket Riot, Harvest, The Sims 3, Uno, Twin Blades, and of course more will be appearing every day we look. There are more. Game prices range from $2.99 to $6.99, with most of them being closer to $2.99 to $4.99. There are a variety of titles here. These are not just Microsoft games. And we're going to demo the games soon. And you can also do a selector here. When you're looking at applications or games or anything, you can go by top, what's new, and our favorite, what's free? So there you have the free game selection. Sudoku, chess. How about gaming itself? I mean, that's one of the big draws of this phone, is the Xbox Live integration and the potential for games given the high-end hardware and Microsoft's prowess with Xbox services. We're going to take a look at some of the demo games that we downloaded now. This is the game The Harvest. This is a Microsoft game. It's available on Xbox 360 also. You hear the uh, HD7 is a very loud and somewhat shrill speaker, or set of speakers, okay. controls, and that is available in some games. And game performance is quite good, and the graphics quality overall in games is very nice. However, load times we find to be quite slow compared to iPhone games, even the, comparing the same title across platforms. And we're still working on loading the harvest.
Alright, here we are in game now. The HD7 doesn't have the most saturated display. It's huge at 4.3 inches, but the Samsung Focus looks more vibrant, obviously, with the Super AMOLED display when you're playing games. So that's the Harvest, and that's pretty impressive, really. This is the first platform we've seen that could potentially give the iPhone a run for its money. So of the many apps that are actually available now for Windows Phone 7, Netflix is probably going to be one of the more popular ones if you have a Netflix subscription. So we'll take a look at that. And again, we're doing this over Wi-Fi. You can do this over 3G, and the performance and quality are still pretty decent, but you'll get something better over Wi-Fi. So here you can net access Netflix's library of streaming videos if you have an account with them. So here we are streaming Psych over Netflix. Well, the quality is not bad. Another nice feature of Windows Phone 7 is voice command. If you press and hold on the start button, you can tell the phone to do quite a few things. Find Starbucks in Boston. Searching for Starbucks in Boston. Excellent. And of course, you have your choice of local items to Boston right here with listings. And you can See news about Starbucks, back to local information, web, which is pretty much the same as what you'll find under news all the time. But so, so we want to go take a look at one of those locations on Boylston. I'm just going to tap that. We get information, rating, directions, call them up, check out their website. Tap on there just to see a map. And there it is. And we could, again, get directions if we wanted. Uh, zoom in, get a better view. There it is. So while we're in here, let's take a look at the keyboard. This is one of the best keyboards ever used on a mobile device. I have to say, it's it's got very good little subtle sound effects here. You can hear that. It, it's it's not annoying, but yet like yet you know that you've punched in some keys there, and it, it's not just because this is a large screen device. Because even using the somewhat smaller Samsung Focus, I felt the same thing. It's just a very good keyboard. And you will mostly be using this in portrait mode because there is limited support for landscape mode right now in the operating system. Hopefully that will come. You've seen individual applications, of course, too, like the web browser and uh, the photo viewer and some of the third-party applications, but so far Microsoft hasn't done pervasive landscape mode. For example, if you turn it like that, no. These tiles are meant to be used up and down and then swiping in the panoramic view.